Hey, Christ Community Church, good evening for whenever you're watching this. Um, let's just jump into this. I'm Dal. I'm the middle school pastor here, and we're continuing our, our Wednesday in the Word series of uh, Your Pastor's Favorite Passages Unlocked. Um, I have no clue how to start this one, um, specifically other than by saying that I love serving people. I love serving people. Um, this verse I want to share with you, this passage, isn't why I love serving people per se, but I think because I love serving people so much that this verse just really speaks to me. Um, um, it just, um, I think, is kind of like a little anthem of what motivates me, encourages me on this specific topic of serving people. Um, I've taken a few spiritual gift assessments over the years, um, and generally my top three gifts that I, that I usually pull or, or net are, are um, hospitality and service and helps. Um, those are usually the top ones that I have. And it's probably my top passions too. I remember a long time ago, before I was in elementary school, um, story time, story time with Dale. A long time ago, um, my parents, not my parents, my mother and my grandmother, they went to Costco. I was living with them at the time. Um, it was before I was in elementary school, and they came back with this huge mother load of, of just gold from Costco. They, they had like the big box of chips, the popsicles, the sodas, the cookies, the, the fruit by the foots, just literally everything that you could think of that a kid would want, um, they just came back with. And it was like a whole bunch. Um, and sodas too. Um, so they had all the fruit snacks, all that good stuff. Um, and while they were gone at the store picking this stuff up, I was asleep. I was out cold. And when they got home, they were exhausted. So they decided to take a nap. But at that point, I had already slept. So I was wide awake. So you can already think about the trouble that I'm getting into when I say that they're asleep and I'm wide awake and I'm ready to, to cause some trouble. Um, well, what's a young boy supposed to do with all these snacks and nobody to share them with? Luckily for me, um, I had a lot of friends that lived in the apartment complex that we were living in at that time. Um, so I decided, hey, you know what, I'll just take box after box after box of all these treats with me um, outside and I'll find some friends to share them with. I said, hey guys, I got this treasure. What's mine is yours. Um, so let's, let's have a good time. Luckily, not only were there my friends at the playground, there was also people walking around too. I remember this, this um, young mom walking around with her, her maybe two-year-old then. Um, in, a, in a stroller, and, and, uh, and we shared a bunch of stuff with them too. Uh, but there were just families and families out there. Um, but it was with this group that I first learned about what happens when you shake a can of soda. So I, I'm just handing out all this food, some of it being a little wasteful. We got these sodas, we're shaking it, and we're just seeing how high the soda streams can fly in the air. It was pretty much like a water park except with streams of soda that were just going all over the place. Uh, needless to say, my family was not happy when they woke up. They were not pleased. They weren't saying, Dal, good job at sharing all the stuff. They were pretty upset. Um, and I think, why did I do that? Why, why did I uh, share all those things? I obviously, it wasn't mine to share. At the end of the day, I think part of it was because I was a, I was a young child. Um, I was a kid. Uh, but I think another part of it is that's just how I was wired and designed. God put it on my heart to, to want to serve and want to share and show hospitality. And even now... I love having people over um, at where I live and, and just making them food and making them coffee and tea and, and making them feel like guests and making them feel at home. But God designed me with that heart of hospitality and I wanted to share the abundance of what I had with other people even though it wasn't mine to share. And it's in that same spirit of hospitality that I want to share this passage from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 8 to 10. I'm reading from verse 8, it says, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as, God, as good stewards of God's varied grace. It's assumed that Peter wrote this primarily to a group, um, to primarily a Gentile group um, or church to encourage them with the main theme of having hope even in persecution. Um, and in this section specifically of chapter 4, he gives encouragement on how to be good stewards of God's grace. I didn't, I, if I said uh, Paul, I meant to say Peter. Um, uh, but yeah, Peter wrote this um, uh, to give encouragement on how to be good stewards of God's grace. And that's the same message that I've taken um, to heart time and time again. And the same message that I want to highlight for you as well. It's a simple message. Be good stewards of what God has given you. There's no deep hidden meaning in this passage. It's really just straightforward. A steward usually served as a house manager. They had no wealth of their own but they distributed and were responsible for spreading out their master's wealth according to the master's will and direction. Well, we have a master who's given great things to us, and it's our job to be good stewards of that. We have nothing of our own value that we can offer people apart from the gospel of Jesus Christ. So our call is to share not only that gospel, but of course what we've been gifted with. 
Uh, we've been blessed, um, I, I like to say we've been blessed to bless others. Um, and, ultimately share that, and ultimately share that love of God with those around us. I think we could all agree that without the intervening work of the cross and God sending his son to die on that cross, we'd be dead. Um, so some practical things that may help move this process as you think, okay, well, how can I bless others with what I've been blessed with? I'm obviously sharing the gospel is one. Um, but if you haven't given much thought on this, we have um, a spiritual gifts assessment at our church website. If you go to the members tab, um, and there it kind of talks about just church membership, but it also talks, it also has a section where um, you can take a spiritual gifts test, and it'll kind of help um, raise awareness of what you're gifted at. This test isn't by any means the final authority of what your passions and gifts are and what you can and can't do in the church, but they'll definitely help point you in the right direction. And once you have a good idea of how God has gifted you, just take time um, to pray and um, ask God to give you opportunities to serve in that capacity, whether it's in the church or outside of the church. It can be with uh, caring ministries. We have an awesome group doing that on Wednesdays. I know some of the community groups are going on other days as well to help distribute food boxes and serving um, the community that way. Um, or it could be um, using your gifts to serve at the church um, physically, and, and that could be in ways like the tech booth. We've been talking about that a lot. Um, or children's ministry. I know Awana is in need of a lot of help there. Um, so there's countless ways that you can use your gifts. I'd also want to challenge you to maybe think of ways that you could um, jump outside of what you're comfortable with and maybe serve them that way too. Maybe uh, you're not too good at certain things, but you want to try it. Um, it's fine if you try it and, and maybe it's not the right fit. Um, but I just want to encourage you guys to, to pray about how you can serve. Um, not just the church, but your community as well. Um, so with that said, um, I, I just want to continue this conversation. Um, if you want to comment below in this video in the comments on Facebook what your spiritual gifts are um, and maybe how you're using them, um, I'd love to continue that dialogue and, and encourage you and see what you guys are doing. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, thanks for tuning into this Wednesday in the Word. I hope it was helpful. I know it was kind of short and succinct, but it's a short and succinct passage that, that has the meaning really well clear in just the words that it says. So Thank you for your time, guys. You have a great day and enjoy your night. Peter Piper picked the peckle pickle peppers, the peckle pickle peppers, Peter Piper picked it. Peter Piper picked the peckle pickle peppers, where's the peckle pickle peppers, Peter Piper picked. Oh, I messed up. Oh, well. All right.